Poinsettia, Chapter 8 Soft footsteps padded towards the hospital. Angus turned up his nose, sniffing the bitter cold air. He could recognize Lord McCarran's scent. His carriage was still here. As for the driver, he was off behind the many corners and turns. Another sniff. Ah, yes, he was relieving himself. Such tactless, foul peasants. But then again, Angus had no room to say anything. He was more animal than even that, and he was intent on proving just that. Oh, but how quick he'd have to make it. Beneath the heavy bumble coat, he wore absolutely nothing. Needless to say, his genitals were not too happy about the drafts of such a chilly night. Well, time to start. He removed the bumble coat, stepping out. At this hour, all of the patients would likely be asleep, and orderlies and nurses would be in the halls, away from the windows. This was perfect. Not that he minded anyone seeing him naked, after all. He had such a boyish body. He normally enjoyed the reaction of shock and amusement. However, now was not the time for such folly. There was other folly afoot he had to attend to. He rubbed his hands together and glanced up at the sky. No stars. What a gloomy winter this was going to be. He could worry about such things later, however. He concentrated feeling his body begin to shift. Hair began to sprout all over his body, soon becoming soft fur of charcoal color with black markings on his head and down his back and a black ring near the tip of his bushy tail that sprouted behind him. The very tip of the tail was white, almost mocking that of a fox. He threw his head back, gritting his teeth as his mouth began to stretch into a muzzle. He bent forward as his hands began to turn into claws, and his legs began to shift into a more animalistic shape. Large paws replacing human feet, long claws poking out. He threw his head back again with an eerie howl that carried over the land, frightening birds from their nests and shelters and disturbing fuzzy woodland creatures and sending them all into a panic. He crept over to the black carriage, the horses rearing up and trying to panic, but were tied fast to where they were. Angus took hold of their bridles and pulled them down, shushing them and gently running his hand down their tense and frightened faces. Be silent, me animal brethren. Hush! Be silent now. It is nay ye I'm after. Be calm. Be still. Despite his appearance, his voice was soothing, and the jittery horses snorted a few times, and shifted from hoof to hoof in an uneasy manner, but otherwise remained where they were, as if they had a real choice. Angus crawled onto the carriage, examining it from all sides. At this hour, he really didn't have much time. Lord McCairn didn't seem like the type to spend the night in some brat hospital. He surely would want to be in his own bed or in the bed of some harlot. This didn't really give Angus a lot of time to make his statement. But then again, he didn't really need an extensive amount of time. He crawled back down to the ground, opening the carriage and stepping in. He shook off, dismissing any snow that would have embedded in his fur. The interior was quite nice and Merlot. It smelled rather sweet as well. He perfumed the inside. It made Angus let out a sneeze, as he hadn't expected something of that sort. Then a shake of the head, and he grinned, ready to do his duty in intervals. He chuckled as he grabbed his genitals, and being quite childish in his manners, began to release hot, heavy-scented urine about the inside of the carriage. He wanted to be sure every bit of the surface was covered in his ammonia, the scent marking what was his just as any dog would. He hummed a little ditty, bouncing a little as he reiterated Danny Boy. Still, despite the long, hot streams, one could only hold so much urine in the bladder at one time, and he was sure to empty every last drop. He had to shake his hand, having had the urine run a little onto it. 
He inhaled deeply. The smell was heavy and poignant. It was pleasant to him, for it was his scent. But to others, and especially humans, he could only imagine how horrible it would be. Ah, but he wasn't quite finished yet. He squatted over the seat. It was a little uncomfortable, for his body mass was a little bigger than what the seat allowed. One normally did not squat on a carriage seat. But he kept his balance by putting his hands on the side of the carriage, allowing him to evacuate his bowels. Once completely emptied, he waltzed out of the carriage with such casualty. He puffed out his chest proudly. His ears perked as he heard stirring. The driver was coming back, and Lorne McCarran was on his way out. Quickly, he bounded for the holly, having to bite his tongue when he realized just where he'd escaped to, and not liking the feeling of pointy holly leaves jabbing him in all areas. Lord McCarran marched towards his carriage, waving his cane for his driver to hurry and get into the driver's seat. Hurry up, man! I need to get away from this brat house! A car, sir, the driver said, hopping into his seat and grabbing the reins. Lord McCarran opened his carriage and pulled himself in. Once inside, his face twisted at the horrible smell. It was so strong that he dropped into his seat, among other things. What in the Lord saying heaven, he shouted, darting out of his carriage in a frantic fit. Finding the excrement on the seat of his trousers and his back, and legs soaked with urine. Man, is this your idea of a joke? Forgive me, sir, but I didn't know what happened. It's been quiet all night. Does this look quiet, man? Look at me. Clean this mess up. What in the world is going on? Who did this? I didn't know, sir, the driver said, coming down and really having no idea what to do. We may just have to borrow saddles and another carriage to take you home. Damn! Well, then, don't just stand there, man. Untie these horses. And let's get another carriage. He continued to mutter further under his breath, cussing and ranting about his humiliation. Angus tried very hard not to laugh, holding his muzzle closed until the new carriage was hooked up and the driver took Lord McCarran away. He came from his hiding place, pulling holly leaves from his furry bottom. That was one hiding place he would not choose again too freely. He came to inspect the abandoned and soiled carriage again and laughed. Good job well done, he declared to himself. He grinned a wide toothy grin, as if impressing an audience. With a turn of his head, he then realized there was an audience. He gasped, ears shooting erect, his tail sticking straight out, and the fur on his scruff standing on end. There was a figure in one of the windows. His werewolf eyes scanned it, zoning in. Sonny, the child he had seen earlier, was at the window with her bear, peering out at him. He gasped. This was not good at all. In a panic, he dropped onto all fours and bounded to retrieve the bumble coat in his mouth and began to gallop off into the trees, away from spying eyes and any other individuals who could run into him.